made some uh, pumpkin spice swirl soap last weekend. We went, I went live and I made two batches of it. One I was live and the second batch uh, I wasn't live for, but I thought I would show you both of them tonight. I'll only keep you through cutting one of them. Well, we'll cut a portion of both of them so you can see the differences. And if you take a look at my, uh, my Peaceful Living page or even in the Clean Living page, one of the reasons that I make soap, I started making soap, it was, my, it was my first attempt at reducing chemicals in the house, right? I wanna know what's in my soap. And uh, uh, main reason that I enjoy it is this part right here, getting to cut it. Because no matter how you put it together and how you pour it into the molds, um, when you cut it, it's like Christmas morning, right? It's, it's always a little surprise on what it looks like. Now the first batch, I will tell you that the first batch I made that I was live, to me looked a little bit uh, liquidy. Like I had not let the... Um, lye cool down enough before I poured it into the into the batter but so what I did was when I got off of live I put it back into the crock pot for a minute for about five minutes and then I used the immersion blender back to it again which mixed all that pretty color remember with you if you watched we mixed a uh, um, a copper mica uh, um, like a bronzy color mica and then we had the white portion of it well it's naturally going to be a little bit yellow because it's got uh, natural pumpkin in it so it takes on a little bit of that color but when I put it all back into the into the crock pot I had no choice but to use the immersion blender again so it kind of mixed it all up so we don't know what that's going to look like but um, I'm excited to cut it so two diff two batches made the same day and they'll both be a little bit different one thing I did forget to tell you when you pour it this is the mold one of the molds that I used and if you remember I said I told you uh, I buy these molds intentionally I buy them off of Essentials Depot because you can stack them so when I become big and famous someday as a soap maker, uh, I can make you know 50 of these stacked on top of each other one at a time. So they're really nice there. They come with this aluminum frame and then the silicone mold because you're pouring hot, a hot soap into the silicone mold. So you want something to hold it. A lot of people will use wood. You can use wood ones and I've seen the wood ones. Uh, I chose to go with the aluminum ones mainly because they stack so nicely. So. But one of the things I neglected to mention the other day is once you pour the soap into the mold, uh, give it about 10 minutes or so, it'll start to settle and you'll start to feel it. It'll start to harden, kind of like Jello does when it's a little squiggly on the top when you, when you tap it. When it gets to that um, uh, texture, and I, I keep a little bottle of uh, just pure alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol, and you just spritz the top of the soap. And what that does, if you've ever made soap, and you haven't done that, you'll notice that the top of the soap will get like a little bit white and chalky, which for certain soaps, quite frankly, I don't do that because I want it to look like a little bit white and chalky, especially if I use like a purple uh, color in the, in the top portion of the soap because it comes out looking a little bit like frosting. But uh, the trick is, is just to spritz the top, not a lot because it'll make the soap crack, but just spritz it like you would uh, your face when you're putting on your makeup. And then you just let it sit for a few days, and it sits in the uh, it sits in the in the mold until it gets hard. <laughs> you need a smell a vision, so yeah. So I can tell you that I can smell it. Um, it smells like well, it smells like fall, uh, but it uh, you know in the morning on Thanksgiving morning, and you're baking your pumpkin pie kind of thing. That's what it smells like. That's I can smell it now before I even cut it. So it'll be, it'll be better after I cut it. So, hi Rainy. So I am going to flip this over. So this is a mold. Uh, it makes 11 bars. Each brick is 11 bars. I buy them from Essentials Depot. And if you join the green, what they call the green green club, I think something like that, uh, with, uh, and it does, I don't think it costs anything. I think about that. It might be $25 a year to, to be a member of that. But you get, um, huge discounts on your shipping. You get products every month that go 50 to 70% off. You get one of these a year that's free, and this is $27 in itself, this with the with the uh, silicone mold. Uh, so you get all kinds of benefits. You definitely get your money back from it. So, all right. So now you see I've taken it out of the aluminum frame and it is just in the silicone mold. Well, hopefully you can see this, so bear with me. Adjust this camera a little bit. can't see the bottom of my screen because my wording is there. Hi, Miss Rainey. 
So we're going to separate it just like you would if you were baking bread or something like that. So I'm going to push you back a little farther just so they make sure you can see it. Okay. So you flip it over and it comes out and there you go. And now it smells even more wonderful. So you can see in it, it's still wet. I don't know how close I can get that. There you go. You can take a look. You see the marbling in it. That's the different colors that we added to it. And from the side, again, it's kind of dark, I know, so it's going to be hard to see, but that is a brick of soap. I also sell these on Etsy because I found that people uh, like to buy the full brick because they cut them themselves, uh, give them away as gifts, or they sell them off in, in their shops. So I also sell the bricks. It makes 11 bars of soap. So this is a brick of soap. And you will see a picture of this uh, uh, on Etsy because it's part of my new, I've started to go over the years with Etsy, I've just added and added and added pictures. But as I'm making the product to replace product, now I'm getting more into a standardization so everything looks branded. Uh, so you'll see a picture of that on an Etsy. So we're gonna move this up out of the way. And this thing smells. So it's very heavily scented with cinnamon, right? So you saw the recipe we put out. It's a mixture of uh, different oils with jojoba uh, oil to create the, uh, a frag well, I call a fragrance oil, but it's made with Young Living Oil versus buying a fragrance oil which is made synthetically. So, because you can't buy a pumpkin uh, essential oil. There is no such thing as a pumpkin essential oil. So if you see that on the shelf somewhere, it is not real. It is some sort of synthetic. You have to combine the different uh, essential oils to create the scent and the smell of pumpkin. So if anybody needs that, I did post that recipe in um, uh, the Clean Living Group. It's underneath files, uh, but if you, if, you, if you need it, just PM me and I'll send it to you as well. So that's number one. That's brick number one. Let's take out brick number two. And you'll see the top of this one. It's a little more swirly. Open it over. I wish you could smell this. You need a scratch and sniff or a smell of vision, I think. Okay, so yes, these are still wet. Now, just so you know, they're wet, but that doesn't mean that they have lye. So if you touch the wet, it's really the oils that are waiting to dry. And it's, it is working, the, the liquid, the saponification, what that is, is when the, the lye mixes with the batter and it pushes out the, the um, liquid in the soap so that it becomes hard. Otherwise, you're just gonna have liquid soap. So, so you see the back of this one, how it's different. And you see it from the side. So if you remember, so this is where we've added the brown, and this is the white, the white part of it, the uncolored part of it. So, very cool, right? Pretty? I am making a mess. So now, the next thing I do, because I don't have a fancy co a soap cutter, because I'm cheap by nature, you can buy them. Uh, I haven't bought one, one yet. Like I said, when I get big and famous and making soap, then I'll probably buy one. But it looks more like one of those paper cutters, the old-fashioned paper, paper cutters. So for the youngins on the line, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But it's a square thing, and it's got this big arm that comes down, and it cuts a piece of paper for you. Uh, and it looks similar to that. It, it comes in, or you can get the square one, slide it in, and it has the, the thing just goes doo -doo, and you cut me cut 11 bars at a time so. we're gonna measure this if you measure it out they're about they're exactly 11 inch 11 1 inch bars so normally what I do is I just go down the line I got this uh, it's like a little cloth or what I call my woman measuring tape, nothing metal. And I go down on what each of the one inch marks and I mark the soap where I want to cut it. Okay, so now it's marked every one inch. Take the Cutter, which by the way, this is uh, 
a couple bucks. I got it on Amazon. It's got the, you can get them, the, the, the straight ones, or I got the ones with the, the I don't know, the, the design or the, the going blank. <laughs> the uh, uh, different design, I guess. So it's going to make the soap have that design versus a straight cut. So I'm going to step over to the side for a second, just to get myself even. So I cut these things straight. I did get my hair colored blonde today, but I do that because I'm naturally blonde. And we will cut a piece of soap. So you can see, if we get closer, I'm going to turn the light on over the camera for a second. So it might get a little distorting, but I wanted to be able to show you the color. And I don't think you can see it very good. So bear with me one second. So this is the one that I had to remix. So you can see that you can, uh, you can see the different colors and you can see the brown and the white and the swirl. Uh, it's not as prominent, but you can see the white, the swirliness of it. And it smells amazing. So I'll put that one so you can see that one. And then we will cut a piece off of this one. Well, let me get through these first. And we will cut these. Straight down, easy. It's like cutting, uh, it's like using a cheese cutter. Keep in mind, too, with the soap, because if you remember while we were making it, we were swirling the soap within it. Uh, the different the, the the different batches the different colors I guess we separated it in half and half of it we made a copper color and half of it we made uh, the whiter color so you'll find throughout the soap different designs as you go through okay so now we have here's one where you can see a little bit more of the brown in it and again this is the one that I had to re I call it repurpose or I had to rebatch because it uh, was just a little bit too liquidy for my liking. So I put it back into the crock pot for another five minutes or so, use the immersion blender and it set right up and it set up really nice. So that's one and I'm gonna cut a portion of this one so you can see what this one will look like as well. So we're gonna follow the same format, measure it. Kind of like Luann, when I'm doing this part of it, I don't do a lot of talking. I just got to concentrate on it. And I can definitely feel her pain because I don't know how many times I've been live and I'm trying to chat or maintain conversation or answer questions. I'm counting oil and I can't remember which oil I've added into it or definitely how many drops I've put in. Okay, so she's, not, she's now marked. You can see the top of it. It's got the marks going all the way across. And this one, you can definitely see the difference in color. So it is Friday. What's everybody having for dinner tonight? I decided to go with a comfort food today. So I'm making meatloaf, mashed potatoes. We went out last night uh, for a work event and had uh, cocktails. So I'm hoping to have a nice comfort dinner and a long night's sleep. So we have an exciting weekend this week, weekend. My three grandsons, all born in that September time frame. so we're going to a birthday party tomorrow afternoon. So I have uh, seven, three, and one. So we're doing that tomorrow, and we have a second viewing on the house tomorrow, which is very exciting. 
and an open house on Sunday. So needless to say, the house is getting clean. That was part of my chores today. So I mixed up my thieves and my, my lemon in my mop bucket and did my floors upstairs, did my floors, part of them downstairs. I'll finish them up tomorrow morning. Someone asked me the other day if they could use thieves cleaner on wood. So I have uh, engineered wood upstairs because that's where the kids lived when they lived here. And I have natural wood in my bedroom. So yes, I do do, I use it. I put a little bit of lemon in it because it really helps the wood shine. Uh, I really wring out the mop so that it's damp. And I go over it and uh, the house smells amazing. And I know, so if any of those grandbabies are here and they're crawling on the floor, they're not gonna get any chemicals from anything I'm using to clean the floors. So, very exciting. Yes, and the house will still smell amazing. You know, I learned something too, uh, having people come in your house. <laughs> so. I generally leave the area on which she's on now and she has in her cypress and thieves, right? Thieves to go with the, the floor cleaning and the cypress because I've just, I'm in the fall kind of mood and I want to smell pine trees outside my house, but I live in Florida, so I don't. Uh, anyways, um, I had left lemon and purification, which is normally what I burn the morning of a showing, just to make sure we any, any cooking smells or anything like that are out of the house. Um, well, I left it on when I left because I thought, oh, how pretty. They'll come to the house and they'll see the pretty area running. And, you know, of course, they love the area, but they thought the, uh, the, the smell was just a little too strong for them. So I got chastised by the realtor not to, uh, well, she's very politically correct. She said that the scent in the house was a little bit too strong for the potential buyers. Okay, so we won't burn a diffuser next time before we leave. I thought that was a fantastic idea. I always have lemon in my, my laundry room lemon and peppermint in my bedroom or lavender in my pepper in my bedroom because we have a like a spa bathroom so I thought oh, it creates the right environment yeah so I'm not gonna do that again so but tonight I can burn all my diffusers so that the house will smell great and yes the soap will be on the Etsy site give me about a week to get it out there because I need to let it finish drying you can see if you look at it closely uh, it is still wet and here's what the second ones look like see it's like Christmas morning right See the design difference? This one's got the brown and the white. Very prominent in it. Both of them smell identical. Both of them smell amazing. And if you look at the top, it almost looks like it's got a little bit of frosting on it. Because I don't try to make it too perfect. I leave the top like that. I kind of do the swirly thing on the top while it's starting to, while, when I put it into the mold. So that it just kind of creates a bumpiness. So it looks a little funny up front, but I think it looks very cool when it's done. And then you can see the ridges from the uh, from the cutter. So that's one of them. And you'll see the difference. You'll get a little bit more brown in this one. Look at the other side. It's got a little bit more white. Right? Looks like marble. I agree, I agree Rebecca. So that's one of the reasons I love making soap because you just never know what it's going to look like when it comes out. It always smells great. My husband's fantastic about it. He uses whatever, you know, he uses the eucalyptus um, escape that I made that was more of a men's scent. Uh, but I love it. I use it. He just grabs whichever one. So I have all these empty boxes that will sit by my, in my, in this room over here, which I consider my Etsy shop. I have what baskets of soap and stuff in there. So I have the empty boxes in there so that next time I make the soap, I can reuse them because he takes the soap out to use it. So that's all we use is soap that I, I make, uh, shower gel that I make. Again, reducing the chemicals in our house. And that's the reason I make soap because when you, when you cut it, it's like, uh, it's just cool, right? Get that little surprise. It's always different. So, um, anyways, I really appreciate the, um, uh, you coming out with me on a Friday night, taking the time to watch me cut the soap. I, I love coming live and, and uh, making the soap. And then, of course, my favorite part is to cut it. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and uh, uh, wish us luck on selling the house, guys. So, peace out.